welcome to Totality Town. It's April 1st, 2024. The eclipse is a week from today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you guys for counting down with me this whole time. It's been great. Let's go into our last video of what you can expect to see during the total phase of a solar eclipse. Instead of trying to describe the experience, I'm just going to point out some different things to look for during the event, if you can remember them in the awe of the moment, because eclipses can be surprisingly overwhelming. The white stuff shooting out from the black circle in the sky, that's the sun's outer atmosphere. It's called the corona because it looks a little bit like a crown, especially in some old drawings. Depending on the solar conditions on eclipse day, you may be able to see certain streamers that stick out further than the other parts. Look for as much detail in the corona as you can, but just know that it's not going to be as detailed in photos that you'll see later. Also, right near the edge of the sun and moon, you may see some red fringes. That's gas, and what's happening is that's gas going into the corona from the sun's chromosphere, the next layer down in the sun's atmosphere. Sometimes we have major eruptions already in progress on the sun when an eclipse starts. Look for those too. Again, the sun is going to be near the top of the solar cycle, so there's a decent chance we might see some. If the sun is quiet, these can be small, but they can also be quite large. Remember this image from the 1919 total solar eclipse? We've seen larger eruptions from the sun, but this is the largest one that was ever seen during an eclipse specifically. I've seen some people take the filters off of their binoculars and even their telescopes during totality, not for photographs, but just to look at detail within the corona at magnification. People like to see it with their own eyes. This should be safe, but only during totality. And personally, I would do it close to the middle of totality because the sky is going to be darkest and you'll be able to see the most detail. And make sure you put your filters back on or put those things down well before totality ends because, you know, being able to see with your eyes is kind of a nice thing. I've never done this myself. I may or may not try it next week, but we'll see. I've seen a couple of solar eclipses and although I've never looked at it live with binoculars or a telescope, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. So don't feel like this is something that you have to cram in and do. The experience is going to be marvelous whether you see it with magnification or whether you get the broad picture with the naked eye. In addition to looking up at the sun and focusing on it, look around you as well, all 360 degrees. Off in the distance, you can see some light from the sun still reaching the Earth's surface. And up in the sky itself, you can see the curved shape of the moon's shadow. Right before totality ends, you'll see the curve of the moon's shadow changing position in the sky as it gets closer to the sun. And you can take that as a warning that totality will be over soon. The total phase of the solar eclipse ends with the appearance of a second diamond ring. Remember the first one marked the beginning of totality. This one's going to mark the end because every total solar eclipse has two diamond rings. You can look at it for just a few seconds. Remember, a few seconds. It's easy to kind of get hypnotized and end up looking longer than is safe. Remember, now we're starting to see the sun's intense surface again. So be careful, get the eclipse glasses back on. From here, that same pattern of events that we talked about in the December video starts to happen in reverse. After that second diamond ring, you've got another shot at Bailey's beads as the moon starts moving off the sun's disk. They'll be on the opposite side of the sun as what you saw before. You'll also have a second shot at shadow bands. The light from the sun feels like it comes back a lot faster at the end of the eclipse than when it disappeared at the beginning. Soon it's going to feel like normal daylight again and you're going to be left to watch the moon take about 80, 90-ish minutes to move all the way off the sun for the last time. A lot of people start packing up and trying to leave a few minutes after totality ends so they can beat the traffic. Just know that this is probably a fool's errand. Unless you're only like 30 minutes away from where you're going to go, 
you're going to get hit with heavy traffic no matter what. And the further you have to go, the more futile and immediate departure is. If you're in a remote area, that's not helping you. In northern Chile in 2019, it took us about two and a half hours to get to a really remote observing site. Coming back, even on good highways, took about six hours. And I've heard stories of eight to 11 hour drives for people at the end of the 2017 total solar eclipse here in the US. The April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse is on a Monday afternoon here in the US. Plan with that in mind. If you can stay the night and leave Tuesday morning, then stay. Have a meal, celebrate, thank your local hosts, tell stories and just kind of bask in the experience for a while. Let all the nightmare traffic clear itself out. For most people, a total solar eclipse is a once in a lifetime thing. And do you really want to end that experience by just jumping straight into a traffic jam? Plan to take your time. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. With that, we're going to wrap it up here, ladies and gents. I'll be doing some follow-up videos after the April 8th eclipse, so please tune in for that. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so we, you know when they arrive. Thank you for joining me these last 16 months, counting down to the great North American total solar eclipse. And once again, thank you guys so much for joining me here on Totality Town.